Hey, thanks for tuning in to another ep of Artist to Artist. My name is Jamelia Mendez, and I'm a visual creative located in Dallas, Texas. Today, I'll be talking with Mercedes Lewis. She is a painter and a watercolor artist who wants to be known internationally. So let's chat her up and find out exactly how she plans on doing that. So, you've had a lot of big changes to happen in the past, what, month or two? I feel like it wasn't that long ago when I saw you. We're, we're going to go yeah. to the beginning. I'm going to ask you about all your childhood stuff. and Okay. But... Recently, you want to tell the audience what big move you made. So, I am a finalist in the Banality of Evil competition. Um, it's an international art competition, so I'm top 10. Um, so, I appreciate everybody who voted for me, who yes. you know, hosted me, because I needed that. That's the first round. So, uh, the next round, actually, of the competition, it's going to be an international jury, and they're going to pick one person to win a grand prize in my category of painting and drawing for two thousand dollars so that's what's up one out of ten so i mean besides that either way like i'm going to be an exhibition in berlin and um possibly in a publication so it'll be me and the other finalists in all the categories that is that is so exciting <laughs> thank you thank you so how did you for the new artists that are coming up give them a little bit of information. How did you find out about that? What is your process about finding out about all these cool events? Definitely. So I would say sometimes I have a vision of like what I want to do, like whether I be a mission of like getting in a gallery, doing a competition, whatever it is, I'll take some time and just make a big list like in my email of um like different shows i find or the same you thing know, you do the same thing yeah it's yes. like cause we have to make that time because we're not really going to keep up now after that point when i get that whole list i'll take my planner and i'll put those dates when the applications do when you got to submit your images yes. or you know because that's when, when you mess up because you're like i could enter this competition i forgot so you kind of gotta make the time to do the research yes and save that research and follow through with it. So I would say how I found about it, uh, found out about the recent competition was actually online. I was just researching. I was like, okay, well, what are the competitions where you don't have to pay entry? Because a lot of the times you pay in to get in these competitions and that's going towards, you know, their thing. But this one was actually free entry. So I was like, well, hey, I'll submit, see what happens. So I submitted, they emailed me back. They said, hey, you're in the competition from here. You could do these things. and promote it so yeah i think um like so, you do you're giving me i know you're not but you're giving me capricorn vibes you're real serious about it like i am uh, like yes you do you're have to, yes well yes. i'm a gemini but i have like three capricorn placements and my mom's a capricorn so that makes sense like yeah the, plan, <laughs> the planning the you yes. know yes and y'all are like the hardest workers like uh, most of my girlfriends they are Capricorns. They work, work, work. But y'all get it done correctly. Y'all get everything done properly. We yeah. eat, girl. It's either we working <laughs> real hard or we real lazy. We be like, okay. you know what? I'm not going to do nothing right now. <laughs> but y'all work so much, though. I'm like, and it's like quick, too. Because my mom, at least, she's like always working. Like, figure out something to do. Different game plan. Y'all always have some type of move. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, so Capricorn or Gemini, you know, the role of an artist in whatever genre you want to be in, you need to make it your business to be intentional. So that might sound anal, that stuff. You're like, all I want to do is paint because I went through that season as well. But there are things that I want to accomplish or, you know, people, I want people to actually see my paintings. If you don't, that's fine, too, because I went through that season. I was like, I'm just paying for myself. Like, it's none yeah. of your business, you know? Yeah. Um, but when I decided I actually really wanted to be an artist and I really wanted to 
you know, get out there, I had to line it up and be a little bit more intentional. Um, mine is severe. So I don't have enough time to tell you about it <laughs> when I decide to do it. As of right now, because of what's going on, I've just been on my digital iPad because I'm kind of like, Mm. But I'm being productive with this. Right now, yeah. this is what my spirit is telling me to do. And so I'm going forth with it. I don't know how long artist to artist will last, but um, I whatever footage I capture, yeah, like, it'll be there. I'm going to put it on my YouTube and, you oh, know, wow. people can see it. It's so much talent. So is I want to... What's the YouTube channel name? It's uh, Mimi Chic. Mimi yeah. Chic, okay. So follow yeah. Mimi Chic, y'all, for these yeah. articles. And of course, I'm going to put snippets on here on Instagram throughout the week. But anyways, yeah, be guys, be intentional, you know, what you want to do. So how I know you is through the art scene. Yes. And we would be in art shows together. And I'd be like, who's this girl? This work is amazing. So let me just go up to her and because um, I'm Chatty Cathy. <laughs> I love that. We need that. Like, we need artists, girls, you know, connecting. Definitely. Yeah. So, I, I, that was my intention. Like, I wanted to make connection, you know, with other artists because it is a very uh, distinct process and yeah. journey for us. Really um, so, I met you in Dallas, Texas, but do you want to tell the audience where you're at right now? I'm in Columbia, Medellin, and I'm going to just show people since God will care. Living it life. Living it up here. It's so cool. My little porch. Well, you get a lot of fresh air, mountains. Mountains. Oh that is something we do not see here in Dallas. Like, wow. Yeah. So there's a few Look things. at those clouds. Yeah, really, the sky is really pretty. And it's Beautiful. really not that hot. It's probably like, you know, springtime, like 80, maybe. It's not, not too so bad. It's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. So I'm like, I moved out here in February is when I made the February 10th, actually, is when I left Dallas and got on a flight and came out here. What <laughs> gave you the bravery to, like, what was, the, tell me, what was the decision process and, like, yeah. You were churning up here and you were like, you know what? I'm going to go to Columbia. Like, what had to tell me, tell me? So, I would say it was maybe, like, last April. Because I told myself that I love to do art, but I want to be an international artist. Because I feel like a lot of our art could be appreciated, like, in other countries. And we don't ever really step outside of, you know, our own box to really see. So, I was like, all right, that's my goal. Like, I want to move overseas see what happens, maybe study with the artist or, you know, meet different people and just kind of branch out from there. So um, probably that time in April, I just researched kind of like different countries, but I didn't know where I wanted to be. I was just like, I need the sun and good food. Like, good food? <laughs> <laughs> I need good food wherever I'm at. I need to eat. And so uh, Colombia, the cost of living is really cheap here. Like, if you guys come out and buy a steak at the grocery store or Buffalo, it's like $5. It's like cheap cost of living. So really, I feel like the environment with the cost of living and, you know, the location is still not that. It's South America. So I feel like I'm not that far away, even though it's it's a big flight. But it's like, you know, I can what, come home. What is, the, what is the flight like? Like, how long did it take you to get oh there? My God. Well, my flight um, got messed up getting here. It took probably two days just because there was no more flights because Southwest had an issue where their engine was messed up. So then Southwest doesn't fly here. They only fly to Mexico. So I had to take a flight from Mexico, to Columbia. And so I had to stay at the airport. It was just terrible. So honestly, it's supposed to probably be like 10 hours to 15 hours max. But like mine took forever. So. Yeah, it was like a Southwest thing and, you know, flights, they were like, well, we can't, you know, do anything about it. You know, there was a plastic bag in the engine. So it was like a false alarm and I missed my like expensive flight. 
So, yeah. Oh, oh my like, goodness. Yeah, it was a hiccup. It was a hiccup, but I was like, you know what? Some good must be happening if everything else seems like it's crashing. So I feel like just being positive because I was like, it was a risk to come out here. But yeah, I got here safe. I got here safe. That's all that. That's all that matters. There's always going to be hiccups. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, so, I feel you. I feel you. That's part for the course. That's a big. So, how did you plan? I'm nosy. Like, how did you plan? Like, how does it? Ha like, do you put your stuff in storage? Like, how much did you take with you? Are you still shipping things? Like, what did you do? What did you do with your artwork? That's most important. Okay. Yes. So I know. I just asked you a whole bunch of questions. Yeah, no, you're good because I'm answering them all. I'm trying to answer them all. If I forget, let me know. But um, the first question, what did I do with my stuff? So I sold pretty much most of my clothes. Um, I kept like a few items or like family heirlooms and things like that in a storage space. But I put some paintings in storage, but a lot of things I don't want in storage because I've had, had issues even with like the AC controlled ones. They like warp your paintings sometimes. I don't know, at least yeah. the one I had. So my baby babies, from my most recent show, I kind of keep at my sister's or maybe friends and then Airbnbs. So I found some people that allow me to put air, my artwork in Airbnbs. So then that way. That's so cool. Yeah. It could just like. be, you know, possibly selling. So I was blessed with that um, right before I came here. And then uh, my sister is in Dallas. So she really just, if I need people, you know, she helps me a lot actually when I'm not there. So, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So your artwork is like in Airbnbs. People are like, oh, God. I know, I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's in Airbnbs right now. So I hope that, um, you know, just trying a different avenue. Because you know with us artists, we got to be creative. We got to make our own ways yes. to like sell our work. So to me, that was like something I wanted to do. But I wrote all these things down. Like before I said I wanted to move out the country, literally moving out the country i wanted to um you know get my artwork in a gallery got my artwork in a gallery i want to get in a museum so that's like my and so you're going to get a museum i'm going to get in a museum i just um i don't know if you know someone told me about dallas um and anyone could do this the african-american museum of dallas right now are taking submissions for um a competition and they extended it because of coronavirus so people are able to submit now to like the 30th and the winner you know i know i know you know that's why i'm like well, let me tell everybody else but um yeah if you guys haven't already uh the african museum of dallas is accepting people to come and submit their artwork for a chance to have a permanent uh piece in their collection so yeah i i'm happy about that yeah, I'm I'm past happy because the original due date was April the twentieth, and I was over here spazzing out because yeah. I didn't real like time has like I don't know what happened. Like I lost, I don't know my timing with all this yeah. pandemic mess. It just got got warped, and I was sitting there. It was like the twenty third, and I was like, "Oh Lord, I missed that deadline." Yes. And then Shonda just sent me a message. She was like, it's been extended. And I was it like... It has. I had emailed her on the 16th. And I was scared because I'm like, I want to pay for this. And, you know, the competition's not open, you know. And she emailed me like, oh, yeah, you can send it. So I'm going to have my sister send that little check to her. Okay. Her. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Well, good luck to you. I'm sure you don't need the luck. I'm sure you'll get me in. <laughs> Nice. I I in. <laughs> That's a lifelong goal of mine to be in the African American Museum here oh, in wow. Dallas. It's a big deal. I wanted to be in the South Dallas Culture Center because I like grew up going there. Okay. And uh, the actual gallery in the South Dallas Cultural Center is called the Art Dallo Beck Gallery. Mm -hmm. And I met him when I was a little girl. So uh, okay. to be able to, yeah, to be able to be in a show. I was in two shows there. Um, was like wow. a three was like a three sixty, you know? I'm like Yes. Crazy. So I'm just trying to check off all yes. the boxes. Yes. But I would like I would like to start being like you and go outside outside of that. I haven't really been 
outside of Dallas with my art. So okay. yeah, I think he did because strong. I think the energy is since we're like artists, I feel like we're more sensitive to like the different vibes of people and energy. So when you're around just like a different vibe, it could be more positive. You never know for you and your artwork could just change. That's what I'm hoping. Like I'm doing watercolors here because, you know, that's all I have access to by easel and all that's there, but it's easy for me to just transport. So I'm like, I'm gonna just be working on my watercolor and they yeah. look they look very juicy. So I want to talk to you about your previous work um, in your series, because I went to your exhibit, as you know, it was so nice at For the Culture Studios. Yes. That was really lit. It was super textural, thick paint, all this, like, I loved it, you know? It was really hard, to be honest, and even though I should know better, it was really hard not to touch it. Yes, that's the goal. Like, my goal is to really, like, have people... I was like, ooh. That's good. That's good to hear. Yeah, that's the goal. I want it to be like, you know, when people look at art, I feel like, you know, I want people to just stand there for a minute. I want them to, like, even if you look away, you're not really... You want to go look at it again. So I really just made them, you know, intentionally for myself initially, like, for my house or, like, you know, paintings in general. But then I was like, okay, well, let me really try, you know, way back then. I was like, well, let me try to put it to... Use because if I like it, someone else might like it. Someone else will like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because coming from an authentic place. So tell us more about your process. So I always ask every artist whenever we get on here, what is or what are if you have more than one? What is your favorite paint and what medium do you love the most? I would say. Really, my favorite paint, I was painting with acrylic because it was quick and I felt like it was easier for me to, like, express myself with. But I do still, like, watercolor is the first thing I think I ever tried before even mm -hmm. acrylic. So, um, I would say acrylic was just to let all that out. I like the sculpting process of mixed media because it was like, okay, well, I can add this to acrylic and it's thick enough for me to add this. So, I think acrylic, I'm going to say, is my favorite paint. Uh, watercolor is growing on me. I think once I keep, you know, practicing my drawing, like trying to keep up with life drawings and stuff, I'll be more comfortable. I'm just starting to draw more people and things like that. So, yeah, I think a first acrylic, second watercolor. And I never tried oil, so that's like a thing I want to do. Have you tried oil yet before? No? Yes. <laughs> and I probably won't. Yeah, I have never. I'm tried scared that. of oil. Oil intimidates me. So I've always been a water. I started off just like you, and I started off uh, with watercolor. Um, well, actually, I started off with marker um, in college because I went to college for fashion design, and so we took. Um, that makes sense. Your outfit fashion illustration. Saying. So I was really in the different type of markers and you know, blending and stuff like that. And then I graduated to watercolor and I fell in love with that. Um, Cause watercolor is very, as I'm sure you know, like you're not gonna get on no watercolor and be like, oh, I'm just gone. Well, you could do that, but it's gonna turn into mud. You have to kind of have a game plan. Um, and then after that, I started getting in acrylics and I, I loved acrylics because it was, like you said, fast. And if I didn't like what I saw, I could just go take a water break and come back and paint over. And color right over it, you right? Yes. Like, that's a horrible reason to just like it, but that's what I liked. So was there, when you were messing with acrylics, was there a particular brand of paint that you like to use? Yes, I would say I like golden paints. I mean, it's just because mm -hmm. I like really bright pigments. So to me, it seems like I find a lot of colors that I enjoy with golden. So, and it doesn't take much. Like, even though they don't put much in the tube, it doesn't take much to get the color you want. Right. So in that process with your last series with the acrylic, all the texture and all the thickness, how did you come to that particular style? Like, what yeah. were you doing? You were just messing around or you were like, yeah. I want to know the, the beginning phase of that. Yeah, the beginning phase, I would say my love out of every single art thing, if I could probably do it every day, would be sculpture. Um, I was almost a sculpture minor in college, but um, 
I switched campuses and that wasn't available. So I was like, oh, whatever, if I want to do sculpture, I'm gonna just do it, you know? So um, I think mixing sculpture with paint, it made me kind of feel like, okay, well, I can still sculpt it how I want or, you know, make the paint raise up, even though I don't have a full, you know, kiln with the ceramic, like that. So I think sculpture influenced the style more than anything. Um, for me to start doing like mixed media because I was like you know what painting is fun but I just want to challenge myself more like I want to creative problem solve more like well what if I threw this in here this in here does this look cute so I think um yeah sculpture influenced the style to be more um I would say like three-dimensional or relief like it was very like some of the pieces are very tribal to me like I kept seeing repeating uh themes and motifs I really enjoyed that. And then with the texture, it was just, it's just so juicy. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. I was, I was gonna, I guess, to, color. to talk about what you said about it looking tribal. A lot of um, what I was researching at the time was um, Andinkra, which is um, uh, a symbol system like language from Ghana. And uh, I used the theme of telling a story like they did with their cloths and so I wanted to tell a story with my piece and um, initially when I did this project it was kind of um, gearing focusing on systematic oppression so when I found out and Dinkra cloths were used to tell a story about someone's life of royalty or religious purposes after they died I was like this kind of aligns with you know what I'm doing anyway what are you doing yeah, it was just, I had to do it. I was like, you know what? My process is kind of like a quilt anyway. And the yeah. ancestors brought it to you. That's yeah. so amazing. Okay, I'm into that. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I was just they brought it to you. Yeah, like, because I was like, you know what? Everyone does these, you know, ancestry.com. Whether they're real or not, they're, they're debatable. But just thinking that, you know, what if it, what if it was? Either way, you have the skills that they had and you could still create or you know, bring something to life like they did. So, yeah. I, I definitely got that when I saw them. Yeah, yeah. It's full of, because the colors that you use, the combination of colors that you use um, conveys a lot of emotion. So I definitely got that at the exhibit. So I'm sure that you're going to have those pieces in other places. Just please keep us posted. Guys, if you ever get a chance to see it, um, in person because it's one thing to see it you know i'm a photographer and it, it's one thing to capture it and see it, a picture but that type of work you need to see it in person like you have to so much more information that's you know and you can feel an energy coming off of it it's just you need to see it in person so but i'm sure uh, mercedes will keep us posted there's one <laughs> I was gonna say, um, in person at paper pencil, uh, paper on pencil gallery dot com. Yeah. Piece. If they open it up after quarantine, I just have one in their women's uh, exhibition, and so that is how you can see it in Dallas. I believe it's near the Addison area Farmers Branch. So right. That's on display. I think till May eighth or ninth, and they may extend it because of quarantine. I'm not sure, but you can see it online on their gallery. That's cool. I've never been there, so I need I need to go there. I've met the owner. She's so nice. Yeah, um, but I need to go there. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's get into your present work. So you said that you are back on that watercolor love. Yes, I'm back so on the watercolor. I want to see some stuff. I'm nosy. Let me show you. <laughs> Let me show you. So um, first, I was just kind of messing around with painting Ooh. flowers. Um, one of my friends is coming out with the theme of um, a body butter and she wanted like a rose. And so I was like, okay, well, let me just paint roses just to, you know, try to do That's some different textures and things. So I um, started with that. And then um, I did like one piece similar to kind of how I do it in Texas, but watercolor just to kind of get it out. It was kind of- Love it. Yeah, just get it out and get some color out. And then uh, I started working on one of me and my sister of a photo. So 
I was like, well, if I'm going to paint somebody, I might as well just try to paint my sister. Just bring it home, making it feel more like home with family. Right. And then I Love did that my one. own. Thank you. I did my own self-portrait, which I'm still kind of working on. But you know what? I I yeah, I saw this on your page. So this, can you show it, show this closer? I saw this on your page and I was yeah. like, this is so nice. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so this is where I'm at with it right now. I'm working on it, um, layering it. So yeah, I'm gonna let it sit because I feel like I was kind of working on it too much. So just got to come back to it. But that one. And then I'm just working on more flowers. Very nice. Yeah, and just like I did a little abstract thing here. Like that one. Thank you. I was like, kind of look like Corona, so <laughs> I didn't want to name it Corona, what? but I'm not going <laughs> to name it Corona, but I was like, I guess it kind of looks like Corona to me, I guess. <laughs> DNA, I don't know. I, you know it's going to be like a plethora of art coming out about Corona I even had. I was like, I want to do a photo shoot with the best. <laughs> Oh my god. Can't help it. Like, <laughs> like it's seriously. It's like invading, you know, like oh my goodness. <laughs> it's so funny. So you have something else coming up now. Yes. Another artist, Dallas based artist, um, Susie Cortez. Um, she hit me with the hit me in the DMs talking about um a live art show. And I saw that you signed up for it, right? Yes, I will have a piece in the live art auction on Friday. So it's my piece called Bloodshed. And um, this piece, I, it was one of the first ones I created. But it's just to represent, you know, ancestry, the bloodshed that was shed. But despite that, we still find beauty in us as a people because that's what happened. And we move forward and still push. So I just wanted to show, like, just the beauty of it, really. I mean, just the beauty of us, really. I mean, that was just the first piece. So it's going to be seeing it on an auction. I've never done an auction. So, so Ted, do you know anything about the process? I don't really. All I had was digital work at the time, and I was working on this. So I opted not to be in it. Then, of oh. course, when I saw, you know, when um, her in a For the Culture studio started, uh, advertising i was salty i was like damn I should've. you should have been in here with me you could have been in here with me yeah <laughs> i'm still you know it makes me nervous a little bit because i'm like all right your art's nice. getting up there and hey just see what happens that's really what it is so how's the how's the process gonna it sounds kind of exciting like are you all gonna like log on at the same time or are they are they going to show it all on For the Culture Studios channel with it's pictures? Gonna be, like... Yeah, it's actually not my Instagram. It'll be uh, For Culture Studios and uh, Suze, the artist, that's S-O-O-Z, the artist. Uh, it's going to be up and they're going to collaborate and show our paintings from For Culture Studios gallery. So that's how the auction is going to happen. So uh, bids start at 50 and from there, people can bid on all the pieces starting at 50. So there's, I think, 10 to 15 pieces in the show right now. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that's going down um, Friday at, is it 8 o'clock or 8.30 Central Standard Time? Um, 8.30 Central Standard Time is the art auction. Um, they'll also have performances. So in between, they're going to have giveaways, um, a fundraiser happening, a few fundraisers. So it's going to be a mix between the auction and really a performance. So yeah. That's going to be so cool, girl. Yes, I'm excited. It's different. It's something to do on Friday. So. Yeah, like <laughs> as artists, you know, we gonna find a we gonna find a way to art. Like mm -hmm. we can't help it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're right. Stuck in the house or not, we gonna find a way to art. Seriously, that's true. Oh my goodness. So tell me a little bit about when do you? What's your first memory of art? Create creatively. Like when did you start with this? Was it when you were little or has it been recent? I would say the first memory of 
creating anything was in elementary school. I went to school up north, so I was like, I, I was either, I think in Iowa or something like that. Um, and I had a, I do remember it was a gay art teacher, a male, and he was like, oh my gosh, you know, your watercolor is so fabulous. I think I drew like a giraffe, but just from, you know, you know your art teacher, you know, value your work, yeah. it has you up and you're like, yay, you know, I really love doing this. So I think uh, starting at an early age, just doing art, maybe want to do it even outside of class. I'll be excited going to art class. You know, I didn't want to go to math. <laughs> I didn't want to go to, you know, a lot of other classes. But I think like just the excitement of um, art teachers, I think, made me want to do it even more. But then outside of that, I did um, a little bit like you did, like fashion. I started sewing. Um, and I used to put fashion sketches all on my wall, just like this is right here. I would just have like lined paper with yes. yeah, just <laughs> all on my wall, different fashion sketches and like ideas I wanted to do. So fashion was there. Then I did some web design. Then I did 3D okay. design. And then I was like, you know what? I want to get back to, I think, the root, which is like just what you love to do, which is painting. So I said painting or sculpting, anything with my hands creating that's what I want to you know focus on have you noticed like a, a going theme I talk to different artists all the time and I I have never um encountered an artist that was just like oh I I paint and that's all I do and that's all I've ever done is paint it almost always lends itself to other uh visual creative process like for me so I was you know fashion design I'm a photographer you know and I still find a way to incorporate my art into the fashion like I make these clutches you know I paint on them <laughs> it's just yeah but to me they're the same thing do you feel like is it separate for you or do you feel like it's all the same talent and you're just applying it to a different medium like how do you feel about that i feel like us as artists like you said like not there's you're always if you're a real creator i think that whatever you do you're gonna try to make it like look good or look to how you like it to look because you care and appreciate about like you know those things like a lot of people may not care about how you know something is laying on the canvas or if it's not you know uh, symmetrical or good composition but you as an artist I think um, you it's all the same in a way but it's really you know just different ways to express yourself like different mediums like you're the same artist people could probably tell you know Mimi's painting versus you know Mimi's bag they can see okay I can see how Mimi's taste is I think it just shows your taste you know in whatever you do yeah. I think that's pretty I think that's pretty dope but I so I'm waiting to meet an artist and be like, no, I've never done anything else. I'm not interested in any other medium, medium and that's it. I've, I've never met um, artists that's not, you know, dipping and dabbing in different places. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. So you've been in Columbia since you said February was the end of February. Yeah. It was yeah, basically mid February. Like I got here, I think February 11th. So um, from this point, I'm on a tourist visa, but 10 days before you can apply. And so um, one thing that I might do is I'm thinking about going to school to study plant medicine. Um, and that would give me a visa on top of just something I'm interested in. Plus, here they have the biggest collection of flowers in the world. So I would just be studying flowers and plants and natural cures, which is what I'm into. So I think, yeah, that's I was thinking I haven't applied yet, but that's really the game plan I'm thinking about doing it, doing it online, too. I could do online school and get my Spanish up because my Spanish needs to be better. So. Yeah. Girl, when you said the biggest collection of flowers in the world, you know, my mind started. I was like, oh man, I would love to come down there with my camera and come out here. Come out. I here. love to take pictures of flowers. I never get tired of flowers. I know it's so, people are uh, so cliche. I don't care. I love flowers. They're pretty to look at. 
<laughs> they're pretty, pretty to look at but if you start really looking at the end i did a collection and they were just like the little like roses that grew in front of my mother-in-law's house mm -hmm. she has a what's it called a green thumb i, I wasn't blessed yeah. with one <laughs> <laughs> at all Oh God. but they were growing in the front of the house and I started taking pictures of them but like really inside up close mm -hmm. pictures and there there were like these little insects living inside of them it's like a whole little world in there wow. when you start looking in the inside it's so intricate I love it girl I never yes. it is beautiful. that and trees I never get tired of it I don't know yeah. why trees plants i think too I, it makes you more calm like you're just in your natural state i think it's even having them in your house and you know around the house it's a good energy i mean what's better than admiring the work of the greatest artist known uh, you know like the source yeah that's so, honestly when you're bringing up childhood i remember like georgia o'keefe like at, in any school i was at they always highlighted you know her flowers and like man those things look real like real yeah do you remember how you felt the first time you saw some of my work and you were like hey mm -hmm. i didn't know if i was gonna be this cool like <laughs> you know yeah yeah because she had she was so good at it um i had the chance to go i went to this museum in arkansas um called crystal bridges and they were having an exhibit of georgia o'keefe there along with other modern artists of today that you could tell she had influenced them it was a really good exhibit wow. so it was it was cool to see her work up close again guys artists you know when you see beautiful work online that's great but man go see go see this stuff in person better yet go purchase it yeah there's print like it's nothing like it even and i love your print work because your print i have I have one yeah. of your prints. I keep forgetting. I need, I need to, to get give you that other print. It was not. No, your print. sister. Your sister contacted me, and I'm trying to remember. Uh, did I give her my address? Because she like contacted me on Instagram, and now I kind of can't remember. Oh well, I'll. I'll have, she's helping me. She'll help me. Yeah, with that. I'll tell her. Yeah, that. but the print was gorgeous. So I don't know oh, what printer yeah. you went to, but it turned out really beautiful. So I cannot wait take, to get my other one. Um, to other artists, use Thomas Printworks because it's quick and it's cheap, at least for me, to get like a nice quality paper. And they even can print on watercolor paper, even if your art is not watercolor and you can paint on top. It's crazy. Oh. So I would say Thomas Printworks. And you can do it online, you know, pick it up when you want. It's easy and out of Yeah. Time. I know where that, I actually know where that is. So yeah, that's a good tip, guys, for the artists that are I'm sure it's a whole bunch of artists in here for the artists that are uh, looking and listening. Columbia, you, you've just been there a short while. Yeah. So how do you think Columbia is influencing you artistically? Have you felt a different vibration or is something coming? I already see the watercolors. <laughs> do you think that's that's from Columbia? Is it coming forth because of Columbia? How much of an influence has that atmosphere had on you? I would say it has a major influence as far as, um, I think when I was in America, I did feel a lot of anxious energy just because of, even before I think Corona, I just felt like a lot of anxious tension and energy in the air. And for me, it was like, all right, you might as well switch it up. And if you want, you can come back you know, um, but just switch up the energy and just see how you feel. And I would say a lot of people's energy out here is they're very happy. They're in the sun. You know, um, there's tons of like UVs. Apparently like the UV rays are stronger here. So um, it's like the people's energy, even during the quarantine, they're like clapping at night, you know, woo, they're trying to make people exercise like from their patio. So they're still being optimistic and positive. And I'm not saying the U.S. isn't, but you can tell these people here, they could maybe have even less than what we have and still be extremely excited and extremely happy every single day. So I think that's helpful when you're an artist because you, you know, that can come out. Yeah. 
if you don't feel that or if you feel mad or if you feel sad, you might paint, you know, different colors and, you know, different things. So It's not might. You will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You will. You might be like, all right, I'm going to pick up this red. This dude pissed me off today. <laughs> or, you know, you know, hey, you got to get it out, though. That's a healthy way to get it out. Shoot. Oh my goodness. I, I definitely, because I definitely have pieces. You know, I look at, it's so funny. Some of them are like, oh, that's so cool. I really like, I'm like, <laughs> you know, because I remember. You Where know, you were like, at mentally. I think when you're painting, you remember mentally. Like, okay, when I painted this, I was, I knew I was mad. I knew I was Yeah, I was jacked person. up. <laughs> yeah. I was like, in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> It happens. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. So, so what are the next plans? So you got this live auction Friday. Yes. yes. What are your intentions for the? Well, let me ask you this. I really, I'm gonna talk. <laughs> Pandemic wise, what's the release date for you guys? What are they saying in Colombia? It's May thirtieth. So May 30th, they're going to allow people to um, enter and leave the country. But before May 30th, they're going to do like a, I guess, soft release. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but they're going to allow more retailers to open up um, actually this upcoming week, I think, at the end of the week. But every week things are changing. So I'm trying to translate still. <laughs> and I'm staying at home either way because I know it's still quarantine. But I think it's like May 9th. Um, they're supposed to allow people to go and shop at different places, but limit the number of people in there. And they might check your temperature because I went to the store, I think it was, yeah, Monday for the first time and they checked my temperature and I was like, Oh, so we're doing this now, like here. <laughs> so, okay. And then he told me to wipe my feet on like a, it was like a doormat they had before you go in the grocery store, but like wipe your feet, like that's going to, I guess, prevent the spread of corona even after you take your temperature. So, I don't know. I was like, okay, ne next level. What's the next level? You People know? are scared. People are scared and mm -hmm. fear but makes people But they only have like, uh, I think like 200 cases in this city in particular. It's like 250, that so they say. So, okay. It's supposed to be going up every day, but I don't really know from there how many cases it is. Stay safe. Mm -hmm. I'm at home. I'm at home. Yeah. So art-wise, what's, what's the game plan? What is in store for Mercedes so, the, within the next month? What do you feel like? What do you be doing? The next month? what I'm probably going to do is work on my Etsy shop because Etsy has been a goal for mine because I know I've had an Etsy and I like took it down and redid it and I want to do more with my Etsy, my home interiors just to be having, you know, that base um, for my like 2020 because I have like my seven streams that I thought about, you know, I can do with my art. That's one of them. Um, seven, seven streams. How about seven different art? You know what I'm saying? Hustles. Because I think that... Guys, thing. Listen, to, listen to this sister. She knows what you're talking <laughs> yes. about. Okay? Yes. That, yes. And that's not just applied to art. That's period. Whatever you're doing, get a side hustle. You need to have... You don't need to have... Uh, what's the old saying? You don't need to have all your eggs in one basket. That's you could real. be doing one thing, but you need to be applying it um, in different ways. Yes. So, Yeah. Well, yep. thank you for inspiring me, Mercedes. I need to get my my Etsy game is all the way down. <laughs> you can get it up. I'm telling you right now. I don't know if any other artists, but they're they were like begging people to sell masks on Etsy. Like when you log in, they were like, anybody who has a sewing machine or can create masks or anything, please, because there's a shortage and everyone's getting on Etsy because people are just making them and designing them and stuff like that. So there's different, you know, if you don't want to sew it, there are different back-end websites you could probably do. But if you have a sewing machine, I would definitely be using it on Etsy because they're selling like hotcakes right now. Yeah, I am doing masks on my own. Um, okay. So I, I had quite a time finding fabric, 
you know really? I, I did i mean because i'm not going to use my you know 12 dollar yard fabric for mass sorry not doing <laughs> no that way. no way you know so but i i went to like five different walmarts and um joann's you can only order on you know online at the time you could pick it up curbside but they they didn't have anything so i heard they were like misplacing a lot of orders and I don't know. One girl, she said on Etsy, she sold 150 masks in one week. 150 yeah. her first week. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I believe it because I couldn't keep up with mine. I was at, you what? know, at some point I had to tell my husband, I was like, okay, look, this is what I'm cutting and I'm not going out no more to get like, this is what I'm doing and then we're going to be done with that. But wow. it did help to take my mind off because I was having a little bit of anxiety because of all this mess. But anyway, oh, yeah. so I oh. think that, uh, you know, two good things that will come out of the pandemic is that we will pay more attention to each other. I hope that doesn't flip right over as soon as it dies down. You know, the contact to contact, mm -hmm. uh, even this, I hope I'm able to maintain this because we get so busy sometimes and we kind of don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is that it will make businesses, I mean, businesses have had to adapt the ones that didn't want to do online business or curbside. So the model has changed. You're right. You know, yeah. I don't know how much of it has changed for artists because we were kind of already on that grind. We already been, you know, hustling, Satoshi art. I've tried them. I mean, anything you, online, you can be selling your art, making the money. Yeah. You got to get it. You got to get it. So watercolors, are we going to be seeing? A, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that's a new series right there anyway. I guess I'll show it again because some people just got on. But um, yeah, I feel like it's going to be. And what I really thought is this might just be like something personal. Um, even if I can sell it, like some of the things... You know, I might do like family just to go ahead, like while I'm doing my thing, you know, appreciate the people around me that encourage me on this journey and, you know, encourage me to do art. Because I think, too, my family is very supportive um, of me doing art, period. Like, I don't know if I would have did it if my family was like, you know, you're not going to make money. And, you know, a lot of people try to stray away from art for that reason but it's like you can if you're truly passionate about it and you know keep trying because there's artists that really get lucky until they're like 80 90 years old but they're still painting you know till they die they're trying to leave their legacy so i think that's something i want to do too like before i die like have all my paintings or have some paintings you know permanent or for my family to pass on so that's beautiful. How much of a, how important do you think that is, family support? I think it's like 100% supportive because I think us as artists, we put ourselves down sometimes or, you know, beat ourselves up for not, there's a lot of rejection. So it's like, you got to have a nice support system to say, hey, you know what, you're good. I still like your art. Or even your friends, I think, are good. You know, some friends are like family. They're just as good of support and um, show up to your shows and, like, you know, promote your flyers. Like, you need people to believe in you because at some point, other people are going to believe in you. It's just you're just starting or you're just, you know, getting in the industry. So I think it's the most important thing, at least for me. I so, do, too. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing um, what you're going to be doing out there. Keep us posted. You know, I'm following you on Instagram. Yes, I'm going to be trying to do other projects. So I'm going to keep y'all posted. Um, eventually, out here, goal is to do sculpture. So um, I will be updated on that once I get, you know, back in the scene because I found people who had a boundary. And of course, I can't keep that connection right now because the whole virus thing. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try to start that. So y'all will see. I'm excited about it. Um, and hopefully you can be on here again. Maybe I'll, I'll keep it going. I'm kind of enjoying it. 
I love it's kind of like it. getting to do what I always wanted to do, which is talk to other artists. I love that. And I love going to other people's exhibits. I love it as much as as I do um, making work. Wow. Seriously. Wow. wow. Well, I hope you do because we need this. Like, I was so happy when you told me. I was like, yes, because you have good conversation. It's fun. You don't make it, you know, awkward for people. And, yeah, I enjoy talking to you anyway. So, <laughs> it's, like, it's, perfect. It's hard to be awkward because I'm so goofy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good, though. We need that. We don't need any more awkwardness. We're in the house already. We need this energy. It's perfect right now. So much. Girl, I, I've been bad though. I haven't really been. I haven't really been cooking as much as I should be. I've been like going. Oh lord! That's I've been like I'm buying food. Like, every day I'm cooking. I'm like, I mean, that's the only. I can't make the excuse like I don't have time to cook. Really, I mean, I know. I got the time. I'm gonna make it, but I feel you. It gets tiresome because then you don't want to do dishes and. You know, that's a process. It's a process. Yeah, it, it definitely is. <laughs> All right. Well, I I really appreciate you coming out here and speaking with me. Um, well, I know you're going to win a little Berlin. Ch you know, I'm, I'm rooting for you, girl. I'm rooting for you. I am hoping I win. If so, you guys, I will tell you. Even Either way, it's a good thing for me. So I'll let you know. That's going to be so dope. Well, thank you for being on Artist to Artist. Thank you. And um, we'll just stay tuned. And uh, so just so everyone knows, um, just shout out your Instagram page, your website, all that good stuff so it can be yes. documented. So my Instagram page is at Mercedes Lewis. That's L-E-W-I-S. A R T Mercedes Lewis Art and my website is actually Mercedes Lewis. That's M E R C E D E L E W I S dot com. And um, also you can follow me on YouTube. I just started putting just a few little process videos. You know, if you want to see what I'm doing, um, my YouTube is Sadie's Lewis. So um, those are my three platforms. Um, my Etsy shop that I'm launching, you can get home interiors. That's going to be at Mercedes Lewis Art, all together, one word, on Etsy. So yeah. I cannot wait for it. If the YouTube videos are going to be anything like the videos that you put on Instagram, yes. I love it when you're peeling the tape off. Like, I don't know why that's so sad. <laughs> yeah, I really want to, because I have all this content. It's just a matter of me, like, editing videos. As you probably know, it just takes so much time. Yes. It takes so much time, but I'm gonna I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna try to do it more with the watercolor and just you know show the process of that because I feel like I can't really find that many artists that do at least when they're working on like a um, you know hard or complex piece they don't really show they their don't home. and it's hard because it's like you know you're at a certain angle like I like to paint top down view so it's like I would have to have someone help or prop it rig it some type of way like. Books. I've been trying to find out the the best the best way. I bought this um oh girl, I bought all this stuff. So I I'm trying to get it together. Let me see if I can show you without messing stuff up. Um but this one still doesn't turn all the way down. I'm gonna have to find some kind of way to do it better. I'm like, well, who's gonna create the, the thing that we need? Wow. Okay. So, that one is pretty cool. This is a little two-in-one. You see how the light is right there, and then you can put your phone, you know, right here. And it's a it's a clamp-on one. And I just took one of my photography stands, and then I just got this one in the mail. Wow! This one is like, you see it? Mm -hmm. I like that. That's and you nice. can make it a a twenty-inch or a sixty-nine-inch. So. Mm -hmm. 
I, I'll get it together. Because yes. my hope is to just sit, be able to sit here and hold on. You know, just kind of sit here and have like hover the camera, like you know, right here. Oh yeah. You know, and get it well lit and just kind of work, put it on hyperlapse and. Yes. Just do what I need to do, but. Hmm. That's a good idea. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, you inspired me to make my own rig because now I'm, after our, we talk, I'm probably gonna watercolor and eat eat some food. But I'm gonna try to figure out a way to make it work. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll get on the DMs. Let's get on the DMs together. We'll figure it out. Okay. All right. All right, girl. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Have a wonderful rest of the day, and I will be watching you. I miss you. I miss you, too. I'll be back yeah. maybe, I think, June if they let me leave. So we will see. I think June I might be back in town. I don't know yet. We'll see. Well, girl, I mean, <laughs> if when it opens back up, if you're still down there, I might come, I might come see you. Come out here. <laughs> Seriously, come out. I, it's, it's fun. You would love it. I like to go to places that I've never been to. So that's exciting to me. Yes, come out here. We got like graffiti tours I haven't done, but they, they respect the arts. So as soon as things open up, I'll so definitely cool. know. Okay, I'm with it. All right, girls. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a plan. Yes, seriously. You have to come out. You have to come out. I would love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for being our artist to artist. All right, thanks for having me. Bye, Mimi. All right, bye. All right, guys, that's a wrap on another edition of Artist to Artist. I enjoyed that chat with Mercedes. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it as well. So I guess I'll see you next time. But before I leave, I want to leave you with this. You're welcome. <laughs>